Hi, I'm Esteban Escobar here at the Founders Inn in Virginia Beach where the AUVSI and ONR third annual international autonomous surface vehicle competition is taking place. If you're like me and that's hard for you to say, I got good news. It's now called the Robo Boats Competition. This is the second day of the event, so let's get you up to speed. Daryl's the executive director of AUVSI Foundation and is responsible for organizing the event. So, Daryl, tell me a little bit about what's going on here today. Uh, Thirteen teams of college students from the U.S. and a team from Taiwan, our first Chinese entry, uh, that are here competing for $20,000 in prize money. Now, I see some students holding remote controls. Who's driving these boats when they're competing? Well, when they're actually competing, uh, this is the important part of the competition, these are not being driven by anybody. The boats have been programmed and they have sensors on board, they've got computers on board, and once the vehicle actually starts its qualifying runs for the competition, the boat is making all of the decisions that it can to determine where it is on the course and what it's supposed to do next. Today is what we call the static judging or the formal presentations, where the teams sit in front of a panel of judges and they go through an explanation of their approach, uh, why they designed the vehicle the way they did, and sort of their whole attack at this competition. So I'm now with Captain Gunzel, who's one of our judges for the ASV competition. Captain Gunzel, you were doing static judging today. How did that go? It went well. We were at it all day today. Very interesting. Uh, we got a chance to see all the teams. They brought in their actual competition boat. Uh, they walked us through their design philosophy, their strategy for competition. They showed off what they thought was important. So I'm joined now by Felix, who is the technical director for this year's event and the designer of the course. So Felix, what can you tell us about the course that they're going to be competing in this year? They start from the dock, they need to go across the starting gate, just to make sure they go in straight line, then they cross the speed gate. As soon as they pass that gate, there will be a white buoy. On the white buoy, there is a yellow ring that they need to try to grab. As soon as they grab the ring, they try to rush onto a buoy. They go around it and they circle it at least once. And then they're going to find a path, which is a navigation channel. So the boat needs to go between the sets of buoys. And inside the channel, there's also obstacles represented by yellow buoys. The vehicle must avoid those obstacles. After having found the uh, blue buoy, they're actually going to encounter a series of targets. And they have to shoot with a water cannon inside one of those targets. They go in that direction until they find a floating magenta octagon and they're going to take the ring that they grab at the beginning of the course and they're going to drop it in. After they've been able to do that, they're going to come back. The teams need uh, multidisciplinary skills. They need mechanical skills, electrical skills, software, mechatronics, and everything that encompasses all those things. So system engineering, uh, administration uh, skills, leadership for sure, and probably also some publicity marketing so they can sell themselves and get sponsors. Setback is probably the most common thing that's going to happen. Every team that comes over here is going to have failure. It's not a question of if they're going to have failure, it's going to be a question of when. Although the teams won't actually be competing on the course until tomorrow, Murphy has not been shy about rearing his ugly head over these past few days. The ODU mechanical engineering team knew they were in trouble when smoke started coming out of their boat, so they'll be working overnight to try to salvage their electrical system. Last year's fourth place team, Virginia Tech, mistakenly crossed some wires and destroyed a $7,000 LiDAR system. Fortunately, they had a backup on hand, and after a five-minute replacement, they were back in the water. Last year's third place team, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical, had back-to-back -back surprises, having to replace their GPS unit on Thursday and then suffering a total loss of their vehicle's computer on Friday. It'll be exciting to see how the competition develops tomorrow as the teams take to the water and begin their qualifying runs. Make sure you're here tomorrow night on this site as we recap the results, and then on Sunday, make sure you're watching the live webcast starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. For all the information you need, RoboBoats.org. It's where you'll get it all.